Everybody's Tyler here at Pikes Peak Signature Event, checking with 652A Robo Monkey. Some phenomenal season so far. Already coming in with two championships and a triple crown as well, too. So congratulations on that. We're going to be talking about simplicity uh, in this video. Everything that goes in this robot, it is 12 and a half pounds, by the way, which is absolutely insane. What are we talking about where the CG is, how that drivetrain works out, their slapper, their intake, their wings, a great full overview, but really what's gone into it. So let's learn more about this team coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Andrew, let's start talking about from this bottom up on this robot here. Your team has put so much consideration into its CG, its weight, and the drivetrain as well. So talk to me about what your configuration is and what's all gone into it. Sure. Um, so the drivetrain, it's running at 450 RPM with 3.25 inch wheels. So um, the reason why we chose such a fast speed on our drivetrain is because of maneuverability and like the overall like game strategy in over under. In this game, speed is very important and um, it helps a lot with like out maneuvering and out playing your opponent. So um, when you have a faster drivetrain, another thing you need to consider is the acceleration speed. So that's why we had um, like we put so much time and consideration into the weight distribution and overall um, like weight of <laughs> and, and just the weight of the robot. So if you notice on the sides of the robot, you can see that we have all these black screws. And um, these are nylon screws. So although it doesn't seem like much um, initially, they add up really quickly. And that can save you about like, I don't know, a ha like a pound or two of weight just based on screws itself. So adding on to the weight distribution of the bot, we made sure that the weight of this robot is like perfectly in the center. So this helps a lot with our barrier cross and um, allows us to outmaneuver and outplay like all the robots um, during that competition. So I noticed that you do have uh, sleds kind of on the front here, but are you able to go over backwards as well too on the barrier? Um, no, because what we noticed is that it's better to have one side be very good at barrier cross rather than have both sides be like okay or decent, mediocre at um, barrier cross. So if you notice right here, this um, sled is actually tangential to our wheel, to the arc of our wheel. So this allows it to have a smoother transition between the sled and the wheel and have an overall better barrier cross. So well, I just got to ask you, we, we mentioned earlier, you have a 12 and a half pound robot on it, which yeah. is absolutely crazy in my opinion. Just say, I'm just thinking of all the other robots I've interviewed through it. That's absolutely nuts. Like, was that an initial objective when you were doing this? You're like, hey, like we, we want to shoot for this weight ratio or anything like that? Or talk about how that thought process worked. So um, that's actually funny that you mentioned that because um, before actually designing and building this robot, our initial goal was 11 pounds, right. but yeah, that, that didn't really happen. So um, we settled with um, sub 13 pounds, and it still has pretty, pretty good um, acceleration speed, pretty good, um, pretty good parry cross, and it's um, served us well at this competition. I just love all the thought process that's gone into this, uh, you know, through the changes you made. Now, one of the things, you know, we talked about earlier is you've done a lot of, uh, there hasn't been like a full rebuild for a while, but it's a lot of just that tweaking out there. But yeah. when was that major change made with your dry base, with the weight? Was that something you had immediately or did, did you only have that as of a couple months ago? So after getting absolutely destroyed at UC Berkeley uh, Signature, um, we decided that we needed a faster drive train and we had to change a lot of stuff on our robot. So that's when we decided that weight was one of the most important parts and um, that's why we decided to settle with this design. Like you could see that everything's interconnected, everything's really basic and simplistic. And that's what I feel like um, makes us successful during the matches. I 100% I agree. I think simplicity and good iteration is really, really what makes teams successful for things. You don't have to be overly complex. You have to play the game well, which is what I think you guys do uh, very much so with that. Let's pass over to Rylan, uh, talk more about your uh, intake uh, that you have. Uh, and then you're also uh, rocking a nice hanger as well, too. So talk more about what's gone on these, and we'll see a little bit of demo. OK, so the main, next main part of our buy is our intake. Um, we have one more to intake and one-to-one -one, uh, gear ratio. Um, you, we, our intake uses flex wheels. And we decided to use flex wheels because in our previous um, iterations of intakes, we tried like different materials such as rubber bands and um, flaps. But we noticed that flex wheels um, are kind of a balance between intaking and retaining the tri-ball. With rubber bands, it kind of 
it was a little bit slow to intake, and it also got tangled with the robot a lot, like other robots. And with Flaps, we noticed that it intook pretty well, but it was kind of hard to retain the tri-ball. Um, two other things that help us retain the tri-ball um, during matches is our ba intake banding, which is on this side and this side of the robot, and also our string. So what our string does is it um, lifts the tri-ball off the ground and um, like kind of pushes it into our intake in a way. And then obviously the banding keeps the intake down to hold the tri-ball. This helps a lot with our game strategy because we like to go over the barrier a lot to uh, score like if we like load one into the intake and go over a barrier. Um, it helps with retaining the tribal while going over the barrier, which makes us really efficient at scoring. Very cool. Talking about your uh, climax and what's gone into that too, your, your team is just, it's so efficient on the field and I just love watching that as well. So talking about what's gone into it. Okay, so our hang is um, powered by pneumatics and it's a B tier hang. Um, from, but from watching like other tournaments and other robots, we saw a lot of like motorized hangs, like such as like Ace Robotics and one of our other, like from a lot of other teams. But we noticed that those types of hangs, they're really slow to set up and like they're kind of slow to also not only set up, but also like lift up. Yeah. So that's why we decided to go with a pneumatic hang because we can hang and like set up our hang at the very last second. And this helps with our like game strategy because we can um, plow tri balls or like still keep scoring tri balls all the way up until like maybe like the last five, three seconds of the match. And that helps us get like a tri ball advantage over our opponents. So something I got asked them with the new uncapped rules uh, coming out for things, you know, is that even a consideration for a team where, you know, you would have to go with a more complex haymaker or something like that? Or are you just so happy because you can score tri balls till the last moment, then get a quick hang? Is that still a good meta for you? Yeah, I think like our current hang is probably what we'll stick to. Right now, we're not planning on making a hang that hooks onto like the open, like part of the bar. And we're probably on just tuning this hang. But if if there is like a big change in the meta and that that like type of hang becomes really good for some reason, then we might consider switching to it. Yeah. But hey, as long as you stay under 12 and a half pounds, right? Yeah, exactly. This all, yeah, again, this hang is also really light and really like simplistic, which helps with the weight um, of our robot. Let's pass over to Kylie and uh, talk about a couple of our great attributes of your robot here. Uh, you have the uh, slapper mechanism, so I'd love to hear more about that. Interesting uh, little, I'm not, I, I don't even know what this is for, so I'd love to hear more about that. Uh, and then also your wings on your robot. Let's break that down. So yes, so for our slapper, we used to have way more rubber bands, but we noticed that instead of using rubber bands, we can use weight. This is a weight and it's actually pretty heavy. It's like 0.5 pounds. Sure. And this helps with the force of the hit and going onto our wings. So our wings helps us with our offense and defense. So we can use it to defend them from coming over to our side, as well as it helps us push the clumps of tri balls into the goal. It's a really great attribution to our skills is like it helps <laughs> score a lot of points through our skills as well as the hang can double as a the wings can double as a hang um, making it really lenient towards other teams so when we're alliancing and we're talking about the strategy if they have a higher hang than us we can hang on the side barrier oh great yeah <laughs> and you can do that from either side yes that's cool and with that it helps us score more points for the double hang most teams that I talk to with the side climb, they're only able to do one side because there's a specific mech for it. So I think that's really cool, actually, that you have wings that are that double for that. I think that's really cool for that. Uh, just one thing I want to quickly ask you, you talked about with the slapper. Uh, from skills, I know that's that's a big thing. How quickly are you getting through match loads typically in skills? Typically, we get 25 seconds sure. per match load, which is really good for skills because it gives us more time, especially for driver, more time to be scoring. And for autonomous, it gives us time to hang. Even though most people decide not to hang for skills, it does give us the bonus 20 points, which helps at the end. 652 Day, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us about your team and your robot. A phenomenal machine and a great explanation and breakdown I think a lot of teams can really learn from. So thanks a lot. Good luck here at Pikes Peak. We can't wait to see how you do it throughout the rest of the year. Thanks thank a lot. Thank you so much. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos.
Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.